The Missionary Society of St. Columban was born from the vision of one man, Father Edward Galvin. His passion and relentless dedication to that vision saw the Columbans grow into a society of over 1,100 priests from more than 10 nationalities ministering in 20 different countries around the world. Father Galvin was ordained at St. Patrick's College in Maynooth Island and in 1910 he took up temporary duties working in New York. After two years he was due to return to Ireland but an encounter with a missionary priest led him instead to Shanghai, China in February of 1912. Galvin was shocked by what he saw there, the sheer numbers of people, many of whom were living in poverty and with little knowledge of the gospel was staggering. He threw himself into the challenge, working tirelessly with the poor and baptizing hundreds of new supporters into the church. But after four years, he realized that the efforts of one man would be futile. So in 1916, he decided to return to Ireland to request assistance and support. Back in Ireland, Galvin met Father John Blowick, a young professor at Maynooth. If Galvin was the heart, then Blowick was the brains. And when the two met, they formed a formidable team. Together, they set about laying the foundations to establish a mission house or college to supply priests for work in China. It did not take long to find others who embraced their vision, and on June 29, 1918, the new society officially took the name of St. Columban's Foreign Mission Society in honor of Ireland's greatest missionary, St. Columban. You are not here to convert the Chinese. You are here to make yourselves available to God. Father Galvin instructed the early missionaries arriving in China. I think people just wanted to help. Um, I think they wanted to be past, missionary pastors overseas for people who weren't as advantaged as we were. They started work in China, but the political turmoil of the 1920s made life difficult for those early missionaries. Over the following years, China suffered many tragedies. Finally, in 1952, Galvin was expelled from the country, and by 1954, every one of the 146 Columbans serving in China were banned forever. Forty years of heroic missionary service had ended. Just two years later, death came quietly for this great missionary. But his vision of establishing a missionary society had not just been realized, it had already gone far beyond what he could have ever imagined. We were forced out of China and slowly Rome also asked us to take on different missions. So we went to the Philippines, we went to Burma, we went to Korea. After the war we went to Japan. Then 50s we went to Fiji and then to South America. And since then we've gone to Taiwan, back to China now, and also to Pakistan. Father Galvin was to be just the first of many Columbans who put their lives in the hands of God and with the spirit of adventure which typified the missionary's character headed out into foreign lands. As missionaries, Columbans are called to be deeply involved on a personal level with the people they share their lives with. Father Kevin Mullins, a Columban missionary, spent 22 years in Chile before moving to Juarez, Mexico. Father Kevin has made his own unique contribution to the parish of Inapra, <laughs> baptizing nearly 50 baby Kevins in the last five years alone. <laughs> Father Bill Morton, another Columban priest, gave his life to God 22 years ago. Really, today, we discover the person of Jesus Christ in the poor and with the poor. And so I really, in a way, for the sake of my own soul, for the sake of my own spiritual development, I thought I really need to have that experience of being with people who are at the edge. And here I'm working with these people who live from one day to the next. And like when they say the Our Father, give us this day our daily bread, like, you know, 
the one, uh, one possibility for them is that they won't get their daily bread, that they will really be hungry. So when they pray, it's like they exercise a faith muscle that becomes kind of weak in us. By the 70s, the Columbans had more than 1,100 priests and lay missionaries scattered around the remote corners of the world, giving spiritual and physical care to the impoverished, sick and persecuted people. We were given places that were tough, we were given places that had no one, we were given places that they didn't, it was, it was just sort of, there was nothing, no infrastructure, nothing there at all. And we were basically um, builders first in there, uh, other religious orders because of who they are, they went in there and they established, they set down roots and they held places and bought places. We never bought places. I think our job is to be with people, to share our faith, to encourage people and each and every country demands a different response because of the culture, but to be and walk with people. As a sign of mission going full circle, Columbans ordained in recent years come from countries that were once the site of their missions. In a world changing so fast, the original vision of Father Galvin has continued to change along with it. The Columbans now offer a unique link between us and other cultures from around the world. The original aim of the Columbans to spread the good news remains but each country now presents its own challenges. From social justice issues, poverty and ecological problems, to Muslim and Christian dialogue, the Columbans are still heavily involved at a local level, providing support for their people and continuing to cross boundaries of country, language and culture. Well, the Columban criteria for mission is to cross the boundaries of race, language and culture and religion. Well, those criteria exist now in many of our communities, you know, in the home countries like Australia and Britain and in Ireland, uh, where many of us are now working, you know, as, as missionaries. And I feel just as much on mission here um, as I ever did in the Philippines in many ways. Very different. The Columbans have faced many challenges since their original struggles in China. For over 80 years, they've worked tirelessly establishing a remarkable infrastructure and earning the respect of local peoples. They bring understanding and knowledge in a time of fear and confusion. I would regard our legacy in most countries as that we went there and we stayed there. We weren't fly by nights. We didn't just come in and, and enrich ourselves and get out. We, we've stayed and we've, and we've been with the people. I don't think anybody has ever gained materially from being a Columban. There was no advantage in becoming a Columban other than this is what you really want to spend your life doing. People knew we were there to uh, assist them rather than to do good for ourselves. Even though, you know, there is the cynical thing that, uh, they say, missionaries go to places to do good and did well. But I don't think we ever really did well. I think we did good. <laughs>